Did you know MLBB is keeping a load of secrets from you guys that even the oldest MLBB players doesn't know? And there are even hidden facts about unreleased heroes that the developers want to make but the MLBB players might not like it. So let us find out about some of the secret mysteries of MLBB that might even shock you. Hi guys, Kazuki here and in this video I want to talk about some of the hidden mysteries of MLBB that will surely surprise the hell out of you. As you guys know, this video has redeem codes and I want to congratulate the winners of our previous video. Thank you for participating. And similarly, this video will have hidden codes too. Find it from the video and redeem it at kazukiofficialstore.com and your diamonds will be delivered instantly. Many of you might be shocked to know that developers are trying to make a hero based on Hang Tua but the survey keeps getting cancelled by the Indonesians against this hero, although multiple versions of the survey were given. They even blacklisted against the new hero because of a particular reason. Based on the story, Hang Tua carries a weapon called the Keris and according to the tale, he had received his trademark Keris weapon from an Indonesian king after defeating Taming Sari. He is mainly cancelled by Indonesians because Hang Tua is a hero that represents Malaysia but because of his weapon carries, which is said to be originated from Indonesia, which caused MLBB a lot of backlash from Indonesian players and since MLBB makes most of their money from Indonesia, the decision to not release the hero Hang Tua was essentially a business decision. Let me spill some more secrets of MLBB. MLBB founders don't want you guys to know that most of your favorite characters were actually taken directly from many of the popular MOBA games and most of them are from League of Legends. But did you know even the skins and other in-game mechanics are also taken from them? And that is the reason why MLBB got sued by Riot Games. Riot won the lawsuit against Mobile Legends developer Shanghai Moontoon Technology Corporation and Riot Games parent company Tencent Holdings received 19.4 million yuan or around 2.9 million USD because of the copyright infringement case. This was a major issue for the Moontoon and even if they had enough to pay their due, Moontoon surely took a hit and their authenticity was lost. From that incident onwards, Moontoon even decided to lower the rewards from the event and most of the older players know that back in the early days we used to get a lot of free rewards like the free bonus tokens. And by free, I mean totally free just by logging into the game. You might think that increasing the price is a marketing strategy but it is actually very unethical to see them reduce the rewards and they have been doing so in almost every other event. This might be some basic secret of MLBB but let me tell you about this too. You know where these heroes are picked up from, right? We will be starting it off with the house of Pexley. As we saw in a cinematic trailer, we can see our Land of Dawn heroes fighting over the heart of Anima which includes Gushan, Aman and Valentina. All of them have their reasons. While Valentina yearns for the Anima to revive her dearly beloved husband Ilan. Aman wants the Anima as he thinks that the only through the Anima can his brother Gushan be saved. But all of this is connected as Valentina was the one who placed the mark upon Gushan while she was desperate in bringing back Ilan, signing a pact with the evil god of trickery, Kalon. Coming on to Melissa, she was a poor girl who took care of a tailor shop along with her mother, who was very ill and did not have the money to treat her sickness. Her mother later on passes away, but not many of you guys would know that her mother was a Pexley. I know this is odd, but it is what it is. After her mother's demise, her father took her back where she met her half-sister who kept torturing her. But her mother who comes from a noble family full of mages, Melissa also inherited the dark magic of her mother and later ran from home to start her teller show. 
If you are looking for a 100% safe and secure diamonds, Kazuki official store is here to fulfill your need. We are trusted by more than 100k MLBB players from India, Philippines and Europe. Do visit our website and browse between various packs. If you take a look at Aurora's intro, you will be able to see that she sits on a throne. But there is a very dark side to this. If you notice this throne, you will see a human figure in it. And this is because the throne is actually Aurora's dead lover, Tobias. During her battle with Jask, she fell in love with the general Tobias who she fought together with. But Tobias died in the battle and in order to take revenge and find a way to resurrect her lover, she froze her lover and guarded Queen's Peak by herself. From then on, hoping to find a way to revive her husband. How mind-blowing is that? Many of you guys don't know that Argus was supposed to be dead. Yes, even Argus's father was killed by the priest and led to the death of his mother. Since Rafaela and Argus are twins, after the death of their mother, the priest decided to kill Argus because he was a human baby. Only the girls can be angels, so Rafaela was not supposed to be harmed. When the priest went to kill Argus, a sparkling light would burst out of Rafaela to protect her brother Argus. And this way the priest could not kill Argus and he was saved by Rafaela. Many of you might not know that Farsa's bird Veri is actually her husband. Her story is quite sad. You see, as princess of the crow clan of Askati forest, she was born with mutated blood. The mutation could give her amazing abilities if it was awakened. When Alice invaded Ascati forest, which awakened Farsa's mutated blood and drove Alice away, ultimately losing her eyesight. After that, her lover could not bear to see Farsa this way and turned himself into a crow to replace her eyes. You see, Yuzong is a black dragon who fought against the great dragon, where the great dragon sealed away the black dragon scales, but the reincarnation of the black dragon was expected and thus Yuzong was born and was brought up under the guidance of a great dragon with Bakshia being his friend and brother figure. Although before long, Yuzong realized his duty and remembered his past and now plans to attack the Kajia Riverlands and the Dragon Altar. Let me know if you guys have any dark secrets that I have missed down in the comment section so that we will make a possible part 2. And with that settled, here are the 5 shoutouts from our previous video. Musin, John Meru, Adamin Official, Bosco, Sion Jr. And that was all for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Keep supporting Kazuki Official.